three, two, one, go. So it's a transfer window, and as so often before, let's start with the outs. And we begin with Thiago Casasola for a record fee of £18 million. You brought him in from Roma for £1.7 million and had two fantastic years with us. I know it obviously how many sort of interceptions he gets and things like that, key headers, all that sort of business. But uh, we've sold him on, £18 million, two Nice. I've got to say, folks... I'm quite pleased. And this wasn't the only out, but let's let's see. We're going to start with the outs, then we'll go on some of the ins. Danny Graham has retired from football, but has become the under-20s coach uh, at Spal. So he stays with us. Danny Graham, we thank you. Cesar Abagas is also on the move. Uh, he's, well, he's left and has retired as well. Uh, luckily for us, he had a year left on his contract, decided he just wanted to retire. So that's 37 grand a week off the transfer, or the, or the wage budget, so I'm happy. Uh, Virginia also left. You don't care. Now, though, Hatterbor, you already knew this, I think, because he'd already signed, but has gone to Heerenveen. He is no longer here, which means we have a new backup right back, uh, as well as a first-choice one. Again, we'll talk about those in a moment. Jovetic has gone off to Angers, uh, Angers SCO. He was uh, he was featuring very little, so why not? 110 grand. Got money for him. I think that's the shot. balak has gone to Verona. Feel a little bit sad about this one. He was a very decent like central midfielder for us, but was never playing last year. He's featured only twice for us in the whole season. He's already played more games for Verona. We made a little bit of profit on him after buying him uh, before that from Udinese. Look, he's a good player, likeable lad, but he's, he's not going to fit in around here anymore. Ah, Agostini. He's, he's been released. No clubs picked him up. And we're in September now. So, oh dear. And this one is maybe slightly shocking. Benjamin Abarca has also gone. Um, obviously, I brought him in and I've let him go. He brought him for 2.9 million. Played him a little bit. Just wasn't getting as good as I thought he was going to be. So, I just thought, let's just let him go. He might be quite good in a few years and I might regret it. But for now, I don't feel like I made an awful choice. 12 marking, 13 tackling. I thought they'd be on 15s right now. And if they were, he'd have stayed. But they're not. And he's gone. So, there we go. Folks, Ben Sports News is back with a bang and the biggest transfer, surely, of the window for Spell 2K13 is the permanent recruitment of Ruben Diaz from AS Monaco. A reported £6 million fee for the player who's spent a couple of years alone at Spell. And I'm sure manager Dr. Ben GFM will be very pleased with the acquisition. Because if he's not, that's a daft thing to don't sign him then. It would have been, he must be pleased with it. Of course he's pleased with it. Why are we even asking these questions to the managers? Of course he's pleased with it. Yes, that then leads us to the ins. And with Casasola leaving, we had to bring in a replacement. And I think for £6 million, Ruben Diaz, he spent three years on loan at us. Uh, he's now finally signed on a permanent basis. 43 grand a week, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Contract-wise, I'm, I'm happy with it as well. There's not too much in there that I'm disappointed with. And that now means then he will be here for the foreseeable. He, I say, he's on a four-year contract as well, so I just love everything about him. Mentally, technically, and physically, fantastic player. Uh, and you know what? He could form a partnership with a new player. Let's introduce you to him. Mario Scavani. You knew already we were bringing him in. He's going to be the partner for Ruben Diaz. Uh, I'm very excited to have him here as well. Three games so far, £4 million, pounds, a 3.23 average rating we've had a good start to the season i'll show you that in a moment and um yeah i think across the board looks really good he's got one international cap for italy he played that game in the world cup final sadly they didn't win Belotti scored for italy but they lost 3-1 i think it was to france um but regardless all the mental attributes you'd like to see physically that acceleration could be up to just a little touch but he's 21 so he's still got time to maybe get that to a 12 or something uh, if we get him cheated something like that but regardless i think there's still more to come from him a really good center back and i think considering he's cost us four million pounds and we sold castle for 80 to get Diaz and him for 10 million good business value in the market and that left us with some money Trent Alexander-Arnold has returned on loan uh, and obviously he was here last year we've had a situation with left backs recently or right back sorry that we've not been able to sign someone consistently throughout a season Trent Alexander-Arnold has come in and I'm very happy with the addition uh, to have him here again this season crossing's very good marking tackling solid as well physically and mentally fantastic 23 years of age counts as our uh, that's our, our European player. So, you know, we can only get one, and this is the guy. The next signing we have for Spell 2K13 in a transfer window that has so far been a tiny bit underwhelming is Lucas Oscampos. And uh, we're just... He can't... He can't register him. He can't... He, he's, not again. He did this, this is Vardy 2.0. He can't... 
he signed 2.3 waste of money. Now, now uh, you know what I said before about signing players that he can't, he doesn't want. Well, he can't play him anyway, even if he does want him. So embarrassing, that really isn't it. That's like someone doing the sports news, but messing it up all the all the all the, all the t- time, time, all the time. God, oh god. Um, yeah, let's just not talk about it. All right, he's in the 23s. Just let's not talk about it. Alongside him, though, the loan signing of Daniel Brenton, or Breton, I guess you'd say it like that, from Paris Saint-Germain, uh, I say, on loan for, for the year. Plays on the left-hand side. We've not got any sort of natural wingers. I think if we're ever going to need one, we need to have some ready to play, if possible. This is the guy that I've brought in then. As I say, left-sided player. Hasn't featured too much for Paris Saint-Germain, but has had some successful loan spells elsewhere. So far, one appearance for us and an assist on an 8.10. Uh, he, he's looking good. I think look, this season, very much, is about progressing him, trying to make him a better player to send him back to PSG. If he can put in some performances for us as well. Fantastic. Just to move ever so slightly back to uh, the defensive situation, we've got another loan signing in. Uh, Bastoni's come in as a left sided centre back, basically cover for Diaz and for Scrivani. I, I think you can like the look of him, six foot four, nearly 20 strength. You can actually get him, in, he's, like, he's a real life person, not a regen, so you can you can get him. Uh, he's been around a little bit, starts the game at Atalanta, I believe, and um, yeah, brought him in. He's had a few spells elsewhere, not really working out. People keep buying him, not really playing him. We've got him on loan for a year, costing us a million. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, also, Andrea Bedini is the new Hatterbor. I, I feel I should probably mention that. Uh, physically, okay. Technically, okay. 13 crossing, 14 marking, 13 tackling. Those are the ones that matter. Crossing's got to be good. Marking and tackling has to be solid. And across the board, he's all right. He's a two and a half star player. He's a backup. He'll let me down. Uh, another defender that we brought in, Regen, Lidio Scanu. Uh, he's been brought in, but only as a sort of a, a, a part-time thing. He's out on loan at Virtus and Teller, so I guess he'll get a year out there. We'll see how he does. Get him back. Hopefully physically improves, because mentally so far and technically he's got some nice attributes in nice areas he just needs to improve anticipation concentration as I say some of those physicals as well I would like to see rise a little bit um, but at 19 one for the future just thought I'd let you know cost me 1.2 million so I'm not too disappointed as we're going through defensive players let's uh, talk about the final one uh, in, in the back line or goalkeeper and that is Oriko the Croatian uh, brought in from Dynamo Zagreb 2.5 million pounds spent so far he's kept two clean sheets in his career in 16 games that doesn't sound that good but I think one for the future. Pozovek will probably get another year out of him. And then at that point, Rico comes in and uh, hopefully will progress nicely. We'll get him tutored. We'll see if some of these attributes can rise all over the place. Passing, for example, first touch. Just little improvements across the board. And uh, hopefully it'll be good for us. But I'm, I'm quite excited. 20 years of age. Lots of potential as well. I think that's what's most exciting about him. So in a few years' time, could be very, very good. A little bit of one for the future, though, again. Adrian Bon Giovanni, a player that will be familiar to maybe at least six of you. Uh, he's from Monaco. He's signed on a £2.7 million pound deal uh, and should be... Excuse me, what's this? Some news? Oh, it's the one football app. We'll talk about that another day. But now Adrian Bon Giovanni has signed for Spal in that attacking midfield spot, a spot very much needed by Spal 2K13. And it's rumoured to be hashtag value in the market as well. That we'll see if that's the true case, won't we? Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. He's only just signed, so let's all calm down a little bit. That's right then, Adrian Bongiovanni, who might be the signing of the summer in all of football. I, I like Ruben Diaz a lot, but this guy might well be the guy. If you look at his history, you can see he spent a check, well, a bit of a check of pass, really. He had some decent loan spells at Besiktas, had a decent year last year at uh, AS Monaco Reserves. But if you just look at him attribute-wise, like you can see from recent, like when he's had loan spells out I and mean, when he's been playing games, uh, goals and assists in his game and hopefully we'll get that from him so far two assists in three games for us and across the board i mean attribute wise we're talking about improvements in that attacking midfield area this 23 year old belgian is the guy we also brought in kevin lasagna i just thought i'd, I'd mention it kevin go oh, kevin lasagna backup striker danny graham retired i needed someone sentimental two transfers to get it's been busy it's been a busy there's a lot to take in i understand but diego batista has returned uh, and the most impressive part of this folks is that he's returned for three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds I, I put a bid in right for four million they went now nah, six million then transfer listed him with a couple of days to go we went straight in there 325k and um yeah Bur vista he had a few loan spells there after a loan spell at us uh, obviously a benfica player but he's now our player and i mean could you not be happier Three hundred twenty-five thousand for him 
for him. And then finally, for 1.5 million, another Portuguese player, Danilo Centeno, has also come in. Uh, physically quite good, mentally very good, and uh, also uh, technically has got some really nice attributes, passing, first such things like that. 20 years of age, likely to improve in the, improve in the future. A three-star player, could well be a four-star player, just to tick things over. Obviously, we let go, uh, we let go of Balik. This is the guy, I think, that sort of replaces him. Plays a very similar role, slightly cheaper contract, things like that. So, yeah, delighted to bring him in. So this is the squad then. This is what we're looking at for the season this year. We're not in the Champions League. We're not in the Europa League. So it's about building a squad that could catapult us this season and next season without having to improve things too much. And I think so far, while there's not a great deal of standout players, we've got a few players now that are really going to help this team tick. We've got a really nice core to our side. That is something I wanted to focus on uh, this summer. And now, I feel like we've almost got that. If Rico can sort of... Or Rico, or Rico or Rico? I think we'll go with Rico. If Rico can carry on progressing nicely, he will take the place of Pozovec. Then we've got a really nice core with Scrivani, with Ruben Diaz, slightly further forward. You've got players like Luca still here. Um, um, you've got who else have we got? <laughs> Toscano, Toussaint, who I think now playing he's, he's playing a more subtle central uh, ball winning midfield role for us could be another really important part of the core. As we of course, who I've mentioned already, and uh, then you've got Dorian Heiser still at the club, and I think that's the key thing for a lot of people. There was interest, uh, but he didn't leave, and I still think he's going to be the man to catapult me back into Europe, probably back into the Champions League. And interestingly, Italy have now got their four Champions League places back, so that's good news. I don't know if it starts this year or next year. I should probably check that. And let's check it now by looking at the league table it is the top four getting to the champions league and we have started extraordinarily well uh, sebastian spiro with two man of the match awards two clean sheets of pozovec and ruben diaz with an 8.5 so far this season and we've won all three games shall we show you that shall we show you who they were against Stephen? let's so as you can see we opened the season against inter milan uh, because we have not got europe this year that's not nothing it's, it's nothing really new this season will go slightly quicker than previous years there won't be as many updates there still will be updates obviously the big games we'll try and cover games against juventus milan things like that um but ordinarily, we'll get through the season a little bit quicker and hopefully find something exciting to focus on in the, in the upcoming seasons. Hopefully, you think that's a good idea rather than sort of slugging away 10 episodes of this season or something like that. We don't really need it. Hopefully, we'll have a little bit of a cup run, but we don't really need it. So, as mentioned, we kicked things off with Inter Milan and Spira got two in this one. Luca with 58. It was 76 minutes, though. Spira put the nail in the coffin. Uh, of course, we didn't get Renzi back and he's still at Inter Milan. They just want so much money. It's not even funny. So, it's so much. Oh, that was a good rhyme. Oh, maybe I should do a diss track. No, that's not. But yeah, Spira with the goal and uh, gave us a 3-0 win. Very even game. And I mean, if you saw the league table a moment ago, you'll see. I mean, we'll quickly show you again. Inter Milan down in 19th position. Not having the best time of it. We played Torino today, by the way. So that should be a loss. But yeah, Inter not actually won yet. So not ideal. It was then a 3-0 win versus Verona. And Dorian Heiser got his campaign underway. Again, a really good performance from Spira. Two assists and a goal for him. Spira and Heiser always, all of a sudden are creating a little bit of a partnership. Herbs and Spiras. Doesn't really work, does it? Uh, regardless, though. Uh, Heister gets his first of the season. Great goal between the two of them. Um, and there you are then. 3-0 against Verona. We then followed that with a 2-1 win over Pescara Calcio. A problem team for us in the past. A very, well, quite an even game in terms of chances and shots created. But slightly more possession from us. Dorian Heister again. 69 minutes. Gets the winner. They scored a penalty in the 38th. But we get the win. And that gives us the perfect start to our Serie A campaign this season. Very, very happy with it. I think this sets us up for a good year I think a title probably a bit much if you look at the season preview you can see 7th is, is the prediction I think top 5 top 6 though certainly possible and uh, who knows no European football to focus on we've only got the league really to worry about and I think that gives us a real chance this season so I am excited Right, this is a long episode, I understand, but let's get into our first game, then show you the team selection, how things are working out. This is the lineup. then, we are playing this season. Pozovec in goal, Alexander-Arnold at right back, Diaz, Scrivani and Barloco keeps the spot at left back. I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, why didn't you improve Barloco? One... Well, we're out of money now. We've got 69,000 left to spend, 37 in the bank, but 69,000 pounds left to spend. Uh, and Baloka does a good enough job marking, tackling, and that crossing start that I really like. Mentally, very good. And I think that carries him through, actually. If his, if his mentals weren't good, th those technical attributes certainly aren't good enough. But with the mental fortitude, with the physical ability he's got, I'm pretty happy with him to, uh, to carry on at left back, at least for another season. Um, two start now plays in front, as mentioned, as the ball winning midfielder. We've dropped Toscano. Uh, Centono and Luca now play in the centre. We've had a little switch around. Obviously, Batista 
Batista can play on the other side. Uh, essentially, that, those two play, those two positions will be a little bit more fluid. The, the deep line playmaker will switch between the left and the right spot, but Luca and Santano uh, will play next to each other for this game in particular. Uh, bon Giovanni plays further forward. Adrian, Adrian, it's me. I've never seen Rocky. Is that is that disgrace? Is that disgraceful? I think it is, but I know the quote. Uh, Dorian Heiser and Spieler then to be up top, and the big change is that Dorian Heiser is now going to play no longer as an advanced forward, but as a centre forward, a complete forward. And uh, I wonder how we'll see a different Dorian this season. So far, three goals in two games, an 8.10 rating. Dorian as the complete forward. This is going to change things ever so slightly. Uh, Instruction-wise, we stay exactly the same for those that are interested. A lot of closing down, a high tempo, retaining possession, uh, looking for the overlap and getting the ball into the box to produce goals for Dorian and Spirit. Anyway, without any further ado, and there's been a lot of ado today, let's get into the game. There's, this, there's our stand. Let, the wall's still there. I've got no word on the new stadium, so I just thought I'd show you. Still the same stadium. Also worth noting, I went back for Yap Stam, but um, he's enjoying time managing in Belgium, so we can't we can't get him. That's simple as that. As Dorian puts the ball in, another chance for us maybe. This this is to set forward four wins from four, looking very good. As Baloko puts the ball into the middle, Spira hits the post from close range, and it remains nil nil. But we've had a really good start. Three wins on the bounce, beating into Milan, who. I mean, I've had a dreadful start to the season. I think they lost to Sampdoria and they lost to AC Milan as well. We beat them on the opening day and I thought, here we go. This is this is it now. Uh, I thought Inter would still like, come back stronger, but no, Inter are struggling. And they've played three games so far. They've obviously got the game in hand against Chievo. As it's now Torino forward with it. Posebek claims and it's still nil-nil. Half an hour gone. We've been dominant. The match stats suggest we've been dominant. Now, I've been changing up as well. I've not been playing on attacking so much. We've been a little bit more controlled. We're going to go to control. De Jong scores. Um, we, we're not quite. We're not. We're not playing with as much pace this season. I know we're playing high tempo. And we're playing to close down a lot, but we're not playing as quickly. We're, we're controlling the midfield slightly more. Two starts a big part of that. Toscano was very much the ball played. Get it. Give it constantly. Whereas now we're a little. You'd think actually with a ball winning midfielder, it would be the other way around, but. On control, we just seems to be having the better of the play. I think a lot of that is down to Bon Giovanni in the centre, who gets involved a lot in our moves and creates for us uh, all the time. Baloko, their ball played into the back post. Down to Bio Giovanni, it's... it's it's saved, isn't it? They've had one shot on target. This is a joke. Another chance for us. A lot of it is coming through Barloco so far. The best chances we've had have come from that, this, this left-hand side. As we work it forward into Luca now. Bon Giovanni to Dorian. We've got both options on the, on the wide areas. I guess that's really important to note, by the way. We definitely have these two centre-backs really far back, but the full-backs continue to push on. As Alexander-Arnold plays it into Spira, and he hits the post again. Is this some sort of sick joke? Okay, half-time is approaching. There's a minute left to go. Oh, don't do this. They've had one shot in the game. We've, we've won it back. Forward to Spira, who's got pace. And Dorian's in the middle. He, we know he likes it in the centre. There's Dorian. So at half-time, we're 1-0 down. I'm going to get aggressive. Show me something else in the second half, by which I mean goals. Look at the stats. Look at the bloody stats. If this is the game, I can say, we've won three of the opening fixtures. And this might be the game we don't win. So we know, bottom of the league before this game. Bottom of the league. Uh, we're going to go back to attacking. This control stuff's lovely, but I want goals. Spirit on a 6.3 is having a bit of a shocker. Uh, Kevin Lasagna, it's time. Oh, Kevin. Now, Kevin Lasagna, stats-wise, he doesn't look amazing, but he just produces the goods at, good, at, at big moments. I don't know what I'm saying. Seriously, they're one shot on target. Can't can't beat me here. Come on. Come on now. Let's, uh, let's create a chance, maybe. Let's have a chance. <laughs> There's no time left. There's literally no time. I don't want to say I've been FM'd here, folks. If you're not familiar with the term FM'd, it's when you absolutely dominate the game, dominate the game, and um, you don't win it. Now, as I say, I don't want to say I've been FM'd there in front of all my pals, be mugged off in front of all my pals, you guys, pals. But I have been. Brilliant. Welcome back to the Espalion job. <laughs> Are you, is this some sort of sick joke? I won the opening three. Like, is this a well, that is going to bring things to the end, folks. Good news. Chris Stig, we've got some money for him. Alexander Arnold reveals my fury, and he's absolutely right. It's more apathy. It's, it's disappointing. Regardless, though, that is going to bring things to the end. If you enjoyed today's episode, do you drop a like. What do you make of the transfers? Are you enjoying them? Hopefully you are. And uh, we love with care for me to spend you until next time. I'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye. I'm furious. that's it for me for sports news you know the summer's nearly over I, you know i'll still be on twitter just giving out bits of information i was leaking all sorts of stuff recently so at ben sports news on twitter if you're interested as uh, g calls it bs news which is harsh <laughs>